A View to a Kill is often regarded as one of the weaker entries in the James Bond franchise. Released in 1985, it stars Roger Moore in his final appearance as the iconic MI6 agent, James Bond. While the film has its moments of action and intrigue, it ultimately falls short in several key areas, making it a disappointment for many Bond fans. One of the main criticisms of A View to a Kill is its lackluster plot. The storyline revolves around Bond's mission to investigate a plot by a microchip manufacturer named Zorin, played by Christopher Walken, who plans to dominate the world microchip market by triggering an earthquake that will destroy Silicon Valley. The premise feels overly convoluted and far-fetched, even by Bond standards, and fails to engage viewers in a meaningful way. Another major flaw of the film is its outdated and sometimes cringeworthy portrayal of women. The Bond franchise has a long history of objectifying women, but A View to a Kill takes it to a new level with its portrayal of the character Stacey Sutton, played by Tanya Roberts. Stacey is depicted as little more than a damsel in distress, constantly in need of saving by Bond and lacking agency of her own. Additionally, the film suffers from pacing issues and uneven tone. The action sequences, while plentiful, often feel disjointed and lack the excitement and tension that are hallmarks of the Bond franchise. The tone veers awkwardly between campy humor and more serious moments, resulting in a film that feels tonally inconsistent. Furthermore, Roger Moore's age is noticeable in this film, as he was approaching 60 at the time of its release. While Moore brought charm and wit to the role of Bond in his earlier films, in A View to a Kill, his performance feels tired and uninspired. It's clear that he was ready to retire from the role, and his lack of enthusiasm is palpable on screen. In conclusion, A View to a Kill is a disappointing entry in the James Bond franchise, with a lackluster plot, outdated portrayal of women, pacing issues, and a tired performance from its leading man. While it has its moments, it ultimately fails to live up to the standards set by other films in the series, making it one of the weaker entries in the Bond canon.